So hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for my 200 videos special video. Yep, this is the 200th video I've uploaded onto this channel. I mean, I think that figure does include a few privatised videos and all sorts of other things, but regardless, this is the 200th video I've put onto this channel. And it's also, I guess you could look at it, a delayed 750 subscriber special video, even though at the time I'm recording this, I've got 833 subscribers. But anyway... Uh, I'm not going to go on and on about these achievements, because that is not the point of this video. Also, you may have noticed the intro to this video is different, and this is the first video where I've used a different intro. If you want to find out why the intro is different, you should check out my previous video I uploaded on Driver San Francisco. Anyway, enough of all of that. The point of this video isn't really to celebrate those landmarks, it's to have a look back at my most popular series to date. And over the... 20-ish months that I've been doing YouTube, the most popular series I've done is my F1 Manager series. Now during the last couple of episodes of my F1 Manager series, I did promise I'd do a best moments video, which is something I never really planned to do, I just kind of said it, and I don't really know, it was an idea I came up with while recording those videos. But anyway, there's no point making a promise and not doing it, so here I am doing it right now. And now this video was meant to be a top 10 best moments video, but going back through my season montages and looking through people's comments, especially Edward Hunter's comments, he gave me an entire top 10 list, with moments some of which I even completely forgot about, so thank you to Edward Hunter for that list. But anyway, this video wasn't meant to be a top 10 moments list, but going back through the season montages and comments, I noticed there were way more than 10 great moments. I ended up coming up with 20 brilliant moments from that series. And so, I'm going to do a top 20 moments. This video will do number 20 down to number 11, and in a fortnight's time you'll have number 10 to number 1. So anyway, enough of the riffraff, let's head on to the 20th best moment from my F1 Manager series, which was roughly 29 hours long, but I've broken it down. Here's the 20th best moment. Now this moment is pretty tame compared to some of the other crazy things that happened during this series. Monaco has a reputation for crazy results, both in this game and in real life. However, for Mika Hakkinen to qualify 19th, and Damon Hill 22nd, which is also last, and sandwiching us in the 1999 Monaco Grand Prix is ridiculous. And while it's weird to see Hakkinen 19th and Damon Hill 20th, it's especially weird, as both of them later became our drivers. Okay, so we just had the qualifying report around Monaco, and as ever, Monaco loves to throw up surprises, and it has done again today. Hakkinen has a dreadful performance in 19th, with Janet and Padoa finishing 20th and 21st in the Minardis, and the surprise backmarker for tomorrow's race is Damon Hill in the Jordan. That's the closest we're ever going to get to a McLaren in a long time. Turns out he's overtaken Hakkinen as well. Yes, he has! We've both overtaken Mika Hakkinen, the, the guy who's supposed to win the 99 World Championship. Why is he in second to last? Why is Damon Hill in last? What is going on? Now, there are some weird pictures in this game. Johnny Herbert's has to be the standout one in my book, just... I know Johnny Herbert's a slightly out there guy, but that picture... Wow, what a picture. However, a close second best picture in this game is David Warren's. After his in-game picture rather distracted me when it showed up before the 1999 British Grand Prix. But we got BAR confirms David Warren as their commercial manager. Which, God, look at that guy in the background. That is a photo bomb of FRC1. They've tried to blur him out, but you can clearly see him there. Just, that is that is a nice photo bomb. I love it. But yet, David Warren, that's the guy we're focusing on. The San Marino Grand Prix has been the highlight of each of the four seasons this series. 
The 2001 Grand Prix is a standout one though, as it is where Minardi got our first 1-2 finish with Mika Hakkinen 44 seconds ahead of David Coulthard. We nearly got that elusive 1-2 result in 2000, most notably at Monza, but at San Marino in 2001 was when we finally achieved that great goal, on the season where Minardi were leaps and bounds ahead of everyone else. This is why Hakkinen is a two times world champion and this is why he's deserving of winning his third world championship with us this season. But Mick Hakkinen is going to come across the line at San Marino in, well, San Marino Grand Prix, Imola, and he's going to win the 2001 San Marino Grand Prix. And hopefully he's going to lead a 1-2 ahead of David Coulthard. We know Coulthard's a good driver, we saw it last year. Just in that Benetton, he was so quick and much quicker than Jean Lacy. We know Coulthard is not a bad driver, but he's going to come across the line and take second. I don't know how happy he'll be about it, but he's finally got some points on the board as Coulthard. But he's going to come around the chicane and he's going to finish second and this means we've had our first ever Minardi 1-2. The Malaysian Grand Prix was another race that produced a lot of action whenever we went there. The 1999 race was one that I decided to take advantage of in a very big way. Before we were quick and when the team was just the standard 1999 Minardi team, this race was quite a big deal for us. I sent out Gene and Padoa right at the start of both practice and qualifying to temporarily hold the F1 lap record around that track as 1999 was the first year it was on the F1 calendar. So as you can imagine, Minardi holding a lap record was a massive, albeit very hollow, achievement for the team. Well whatever, look at Padoa, see he, he's proud, he, he looks proud, the Minardi looks proud, the kicker's sponsorship on the side of the car which we can't see looks proud as he comes around the last corner and we're going to see something absolutely amazing. Luca Padoa is going to set a race, well not a race lap record, but a lap record, an F1 lap record there, two minutes, it's a terrible lap. But Luca Padoa has set a lap record, an F1 lap record, around Malaysia. How brilliant is that? And we're seeing Padoa, he's coming down the back straight, looking proud, looking, looking smug to his, it's probably the only time he's ever going to hold a lap record. Um... And he's now coming around the last corner. And Padoa, he's already got the record around Malaysia. But he's going to absolutely smash the F1 lap record with a 156.8. That is a Minardi record there. Minardi are holding. Hang on, he's gone second. Oh, Johnny Herbert, you've ruined the fun. Hang on, Johnny Herbert went faster in his out lap than we did on our flying lap. Jarno Trulli, the driver known for being uber quick in qualifying but having little pace in a race. The 2001 Monaco Grand Prix this series completely disproved that. So much so that I tried to sign Trulli myself before he went to Williams instead and I had to get Mick Asalo in as a last minute replacement. Anyway, what a performance the 2001 Monaco Grand Prix was for him. Coulthard is a good driver and even last year um, which I didn't watch, Coulthard won it, um, and that's shown how good of a driver Coulthard is, he's got past Trulli, although, ooh, there is a massive scrap going on between Trulli and Coulthard here, how Trulli's doing this in the, in the Jordan, which is so much worse than the Minardi, sure, the Jordan has got the second best chassis on the grid, but it's got worse brakes, worse electronics, worse engine, but yeah, Villeneuve's have a suspension failure, and Trulli's got past Coulthard, we got to tell, right, we got to tell Coulthard to risk everything. And he's going to take second place. Thoroughly deserved, because he's absolutely made Coulthard look like a mug, that race. It's just such a shame that the rest of the season went very poorly for him. Truly out of a driver error. Good thing I didn't sign him. Jeez, Truly's doing poorly. Truly's out of a driver error. Good thing I didn't get him as my driver. So maybe Jarno Trulli is just the unsung king of Monaco. 
I mean, it is entirely possible for a driver with his traits. Despite the fact we used Mercedes engines in 2000, we weren't quite as quick as I hoped we would be. Mick Asalo just lost out to Ralf Schumacher during the 2000 German Grand Prix in the battle for second. But that's not the moment. The moment I'm focusing on is the more dramatic one between Damon Hill and Johnny Herbert. Now Damon Hill was in 4th place, Johnny Herbert in his McLaren was in 5th. It was the battle for 4th place in which Johnny Herbert won by only one tenth of a second by passing Damon Hill on the line. Honestly, it just beggars belief, you just have to watch it. Oh, Johnny Herbert's right behind him, right, we've got to tell Damon Hill to push. Okay, where's, oh, Johnny Herbert really is putting up a threat. The McLaren's finally become good at a track which you'd assume they would have no pace whatsoever. It's a track where McLaren are finally actually become half decent, and there's also a Benetton looking to pass Damon Hill. So Damon Hill has been holding up a train for this last period. No! Oh my god, Johnny Herbert on the line! Past Damon Hill. Benetton Sports System is a very strange company. They sponsored Benetton during 1999, but then Williams from the 1999 German Grand Prix onwards. Then they announced pre-season to the 2000 season that they would sponsor Prost, which is a very strange move. And that lasted up until the Italian Grand Prix, from which point onwards they sponsored Sauber. And finally, from the 2001 Brazilian Grand Prix onwards, they sponsored BAR. I mean, surely I don't need to explain how stupid that is. For Benetton themselves to not even want to sponsor their own Formula 1 team, it's, it's just so illogical that I love it. The fact it's so absurd is why I really do like this game, because the thought of something like this happening in real life is one of the strangest business and marketing decisions I've ever heard of. Oh, good old Arrows. The team that couldn't build enough engines to supply themselves and only themselves. It's almost as ludicrous of a situation as the previous one on this list. Not to say it's excusable or even understandable for Arrows to run out of engines before the season ends, and they did that every season for four seasons straight. And De La Rosa, oh is this an engine failure for De La Rosa? Oh this would be tragic if both arrows um, have engine failures. Oh no, De La Rosa's out. And that means that is officially the end of arrow season, they are done. Again, another race at Imola pops up on this list, but really it's no surprise. 
I'm sure there are a few of you wondering why the 1999 San Marino Grand Prix is so low. Well, there were just loads of more great moments during this series, but regardless, this race was pretty insane for Minardi. While Marc Genet went out with a driver error, Luca Badoa was able to deliver the goods and get our first points of the series, as Ricardo Zonta retired on the second to last lap of the race. It's a shame that we lost out to Tora Takaki in the Arrows, but to be fair he was genuinely quicker than us that race, as he got 5th. So a fantastic result for Arrows and Minardi, although it was slightly bittersweet for us as our main rivals Arrows did beat us on that occasion. But let's not take anything negative away from that race, because that Grand Prix was a superb race for both Minardi and even more so Arrows. Hopefully Padua can get past Takaki again. Basically, oh, even Takaki's got past us. Oh no, Jeanne. Oh bloody hell, Jeanne. You you can't even finish a race, man. You didn't finish last race. Please, hang on. De La Rosa, driver error. Yes, brilliant. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes, I know Takaki's still there, but. As we come up to the end of the race with Schumacher's gonna win it. God, that'd be, that'd be an upset if he wins the 99 championship. Sakanu's supposed to win it. Oh my god, no, no, no. Takaki's in the points. I think I'm gonna be sacked because we have to get 10 for the constructors for me to keep my job next year. And with this, this is a massive upset, I genuinely think gonna be sacked. Of all people, I thought if an hour was as good as score points it'd be De La Rosa. Not Takaki. Oh, 38 seconds wrong, well we ain't gonna catch up. If I just put on push or risk everything, it'll just probably just crash out anyway and you ain't gonna catch up 38 seconds. Look! Look at the difference, there's only three cars left running. Yes! Hang on! Oh no, hang on. No, that's no, that hasn't changed at all. Okay, I just saw Zonta retire. I thought Takaki retired. Damn it. Well, that puts us in the points as well, but that that doesn't make the problem any different. That just means they've got two points and we've got one. I've never been so not happy about getting a point. Well, that spiced up the championship a lot, actually. Takaki, fifth. Mesmerising, to be honest. And Padoa, sixth. So we've got our, our first points of the season, but unfortunately so have Arrows, and they've got more points than us. Again, another entry that has something to do with Arrows, but really they are a very strange team in this game, and I swear they exist for the sole purpose of entertainment. I mean, this is proved by their miraculous pace at Monaco every single year, regardless of which drivers they had or how quick they genuinely were. I mean, I even suspect that they cheated by doing a qualifying lap on an in-lap, a cheat that I then copied and exploited from 2001 onwards. Apparently after those two points Arrows got in Imola, They've just been able to improve so much on the opposition that Pedro de la Rosa has somehow been able to get third. Takaki's in 8th for the Arrows, again setting a blistering time, not as quick as his teammate but still way above expectations and the man who nobody thought was going to score points in Imola might score points again this race. I mean look, 53, 37, 22 is third laps. Like, I mean, what are they? Is out? What are they? Is in laps? Have they found a cheat? I think Arrows have found a cheat. Look at lap seven. Now, here's the thing: lap seven is a risk everything lap, but it's his in lap. It's when he comes into the pits. Th that can't be a lap time. That can't be a valid lap time. And I think I speculated last year, but I think I kind of said it in a jokey way that um, oh, I think Arrows found a cheat because you know they were quicker on their in laps, but genuinely, I think it's true. Look, Jean Lacy in the Arrows is in fourth place. Now, Arrows historically have been fantastic at this track, and with Jean Lacy being a fantastic driver, 
he's been able to drag the arrows to fourth place. That's phenomenal. It's just great. And I don't know I don't know who's ahead of both Benettons. I think it's Mark Genet, but he's absolutely shot away from both Benettons. Genet has pulled away eight seconds from both Benettons in a lap around Monaco. And then to the race, I am heading up towards Lowe's hairpin on lap one, and Michael Schumacher pulled out a massive gap. But Genet was still holding his own, even though nowhere near Michael Schumacher. He was holding his own, but did have some pressure from Ralph Schumacher in third. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, a comment. Try and have a guess which 10 moments are in the next episode. But you don't have to guess all 10, but you can try and guess some moments that you reckon are in the top 10 list. And that video will be coming out in a fortnight's time. I'm really sorry I had to break this video into two parts, but I do suspect this video alone will be quite long. And once you factor in all the work I've got at college at the moment, it's just easier for me to split this into two videos. Anyway, I hope you agree that these moments were fantastic and once you see the top 10 list oh my word if you haven't watched this series or if you didn't watch all of the series some of the top 10 moments may completely stun you and probably some of these 10 stunned you as well so honestly you just got to watch the top 10 because because some of the craziest things happen in this series and this video alone just hasn't quite done it justice so I'll see you in two weeks time for the second part to just look back at the F1 Manager series I did. So I'll see you then.